Welcome to this morning on Asake Podcast, your daily dose of insightful conversation on current affairs, politics, and social issues. Please share and also follow us on social media at SiteZW. Now, stay tuned to today's episode. A very good morning to you and welcome to this morning on Asake. My name is Nonshan Shamapigwa and of course, I'm here with Brighton. A very good morning to you guys. Welcome to the show. This morning on the show, we'll be looking at the 4th, 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 4th summit. Uh, perhaps we're going to be looking, talking to our guest there, that's Richard Mahomva. Mahomva is the SATAC National Media Coordinator uh, and also is a political scientist. He's also Director of Information uh, in terms of the Director of International Communication Services in the Ministry of Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services. Good morning to you, Mahomva. Good morning. Talk to us the fe- about the first week of the Industrial Legislation Week that's been happening already. There. What has been happening in terms of exhibitions? Who's been there? So in terms of the industrialization week, it started with uh, the SADAC uh, Industrialization Media Awareness Day, uh, which happened on the 28th, and it was officially opened by the Minister of Information, Publicity and Broadcasting Services. And uh, the thrust of the initiative was to sensitize the media about the significance of the industrialization week and also the industrialization agenda uh, of uh, the the, the, the SADAC region, which is a pertinent uh, development uh, issue. But uh, for us in the messaging sector or in the information and publicity policy architecture of the country, we're able to have a feel of the extent to which uh, quality coverage is going to be achieved by virtue of the live broadcast, the live streaming of uh, particularly the official opening by the president, the keynote address by the vice president. And to those in the business sector, it was an opportunity for them to exchange. Apart from those exchanges, it was an opportunity for them to uh, expand their horizons of uh, trade and you'd recall that it is that uh, trust is in line with the African continental free trade uh, area framework. But most importantly, you'd also recall that when the first industrialization week idea was initiated, it was initiated in 2014, and it was an idea that originated uh, from uh, Zimbabwe. So what this means is that the SADAC Industrialization Week was coming back home, and it's an initiative that also dovetails with the fact that Zimbabwe uh, continues to uh, uh, go with the policy of opening up for business, and I think it has been a very successful initiative as far as uh, I have observed about, uh, you know, industrialization and the industrialization agenda. What are the main aims, uh, right? What is it that Zimbabwe is looking uh, to take away uh, in terms of industrialization uh, from this static uh, summit? In as much as we have got our overarching uh, national interests that we pursue when we engage in platforms like SADAC, the AU, the UN, they are fundamental traditions of multilateral relations. So we need not to look at the industrialization week within the narrow context of Zimbabwe, but we need to look at uh, the values of industrialization on how they eradicate poverty in the region, on how they promote innovation in the region, on how they create uh, increased flow of capital uh, in, in in the region. And as a Pan-Africanist, I'm one who is for the idea of pursuing African direct investment. And this perspective is hinged on the fact that our region, our continent, has got certain resources that can actually sustain us. So if Africans constantly converge uh, even as guided by the auspices of uh, the region or of the SADAC Industrialization Week, we are able to find common ground. We are able to create uh, agreements which are more binding to sustainable regional and continental development. 
Well, thanks so much for that. But earlier on, you spoke about the issue of the SADC Media Awareness Week, right? Or Awareness Week or Awareness Event. Speak to us more about that event there. One very important factor that uh, I think uh, we have considered as government is that uh, the media is a vehicle uh, for sharing ideas. But most importantly, I think you guys, the media, should consider yourselves as a a factory of ideation. You make ideas that inform uh, national cohesion, ideas which attract or dissuade investments. So it was a strategic and deliberate action to actually put the media at the forefront, to say if the media is at the forefront, we know that uh, the event is going to actually uh, be properly publicized, and that was achieved. And uh, because we know that if the media uh, buys into issues, uh, the public is also made aware of, 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 of uh, certain policies and certain programs. Basically, the SADAC uh, Industrialization uh, Week's Media Awareness Day was clearly illustrative of uh, the importance of, uh, of, of, of uh, the media. And it's quite reflective of the extent to which uh, the government and regional bodies like SADAC actually need the media. So the media is actually a serious development driver uh, that uh, Africa depends on. The 44th uh, Ordinary a Summit of Heads of State and Government is going to be on the 17th of August uh, and running under the theme uh, Promoting Innovation to Unlock Opportunities for Sustained Economic Growth and Development Towards an Industrialized uh, SADC. And of course, uh, before that, there's so many activities uh, that are, are lined up. What can you expect going on in Arara in terms of a SADC Summit and other events happening in Arara during that week? When you are hosting a diplomatic, uh, a platform of this diplomatic uh, magnitude, you have got secretariat meetings which are going to happen uh, where the law, uh, where those who are in the law tiers of government, like myself, uh, make advance uh, trips uh, for ministerial meetings. Because remember, this is not just about. Um, discussing uh, the issues that are on the SADAC protocol agenda. No, it is also a a, a free opportunity for ministers who may be actually having outstanding memorandums of understanding to actually take part and actually have those memorandums of, uh, of understanding signed. So that is number one. But at the same time, the SADAC has got thematic protocol channels, thematic protocols in the aspect of media, in the aspect of health, in the aspect of industry. So ministers meet at that level to also exchange. And at the same time, it's also an opportunity for those ministers that would have come for that particular platform to then also do advanced protocols for their heads of state. Because remember, uh, ministers of foreign affairs have become very central in this process. So it means that interstate diplomatic protocol is also taken care of. And on our part, it actually means this is when we also get to accredit journalists who will be coming from out of the country so that by the time the heads of state come, the relevant official groundwork is done. So long and short, officials meet, ministers meet, prepare the groundwork for the heads of state. And then ultimately, the heads of state then uh, come on board they discuss issues affecting the region. So there will be a plethora of issues, I think, which are also going to emerge uh, out of uh, uh, the deliberations of uh, the heads of state. So that is the major crux of uh, the summit. And above it all, we are also going to have a situation whereby uh, Zimbabwe's uh, chairmanship to the uh, SADAC is going to be conferred. And His Excellency President Emerson Dambuzom Nangagwa is going to actually take the lead in the assumption of our 
SADAC chairmanship uh, for the region, a tenure that we are going to assume as Zimbabwe for a year. I remember very well in 2015, we took over SADAC chairmanship under the late President Robert Mugabe there. And maybe I was young, maybe in terms of the media wise, right? Maybe now as you come to the chairmanship being taken back to by Zimbabwe, what does this mean to Zimbabweans? Number one, I think the starting point is that uh, this is a mandatory Diplom- regional diplomatic protocol, that it's a rotational uh, uh, thing that occurs amongst the member states. And how do we get to the level of assuming that status? It means that we have got a bona fide membership to the SADAC region. It means in terms of our existential credibility, we have ticked the box of democracy, we have ticked the box of uh, peace and stability. We have ticked the box of being recognized as a state. And therefore, we are then given that mandate to actually chair the region. That is what it means. But it also means that we are also going to be able to share uh, some of the policy reforms which will be emanating from a Zimbabwean grounded innovative policy brilliancy. And I'll give you examples. Number one, there is the issue of uh, food security that we have achieved through Fumvudza and the agroecological tailoring. So it means that we may actually exploit our chairmanship to spread these lessons of food security across the region. Yes, I know that. Uh, Due to effects of climate violence, we have suffered, uh, you know, uh, the effects of the El Nino drought, but we cannot overrule the fact that we may be able to exert some of our policy imperatives to the region. And in terms of um, the investment trust that we have established in Zimbabwe, I also foresee a, an opportunity for us to expand that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, influence uh, to ensure that we create a favorable policy framework for investment in the region because the prosperity of South Africa, the prosperity of Mozambique, the prosperity of all our neighbors equally feeds into this ecosystem that is called SADAT. So we have an imperative role to ensure that our chairmanship has got a footprint of uh, an indelible investment track record for the region. That is very important. And in terms of even other things like uh, currency reforms and currency stability, we need to share our Zimbabwean experience across the entire region. Do you think such a summit is a platform, is a good platform for people to raise their grievances? I saw earlier on, I think a few months ago, uh, there was the MTC leader and Munzura was saying, no, I want to meet such a leader and discuss different issues around elections and so on. People, uh, and right now, Tawani Mpofu, Adwe Tawani Mpofu, a letter uh, to such a leader as I of the such meeting as well. It's good for, for in a democracy, which uh, Zimbabwe is, in a democracy which uh, Africa is, and the Sadak in particular, uh, it, it is not wrong uh, for people to dialogue. Uh, I see that as an interest for dialogue. Dialogue uh, is not wrong. Dialogue has been a perennial feature of humanity. But uh, when it comes to multilateral platforms, like uh, the SADAC, like the AU, like the United Nations, these function on tabled agendas. Platforms such as the SADAC are interstate interaction platforms. They are not for a, a political player X and political player Y to go and uh, express uh, the, 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 their their concerns or grievances, no. Well, thanks so much, Richard, for joining us this morning. We've come to the end of the show for this morning. Anyway, from myself, right on, Nube? And my son, Sama Piwa. It's bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. For feedback, you can contact us on 263-777-470017. Don't forget to follow and like our social media pages.